put down things. And later we're going to have a question and answer session, question and answer session. So please make sure that you write down any issues that should, that are not clear to you. Okay, let me just check the chat box again. I can see Daniel. Thank you so much uh, for joining. He's joining from Xiang Yang. Please forgive me <laughs> with the pronunciation of these cities. Xiang Xiang Yang, China. Thank you so much for joining, sir. Okay, now um. If, uh, without wasting any time, we are going to uh, leave the time for the media. We're going to watch a video and we're going to learn uh, more about Love Umbrella Network. So uh, over to you, media. The Love Umbrella Network. Love Umbrella Network is a movement committed to spreading the knowledge and understanding of agape love to individuals, families, communities, and organizations in practical and experiential ways. On April 2016, Joy and Victor started Love Umbrella as an initiative to build stronger families using the instrumentality of God's Word through teachings and webinars on social media platforms for singles and couples. After several years of learning about love, serving in their local assemblies and fostering love among friends and families, the vision of Love Umbrella gradually expands into a network, a network of young ambassadors of love, leaders, mentors, families, communities, and organizations working together as a team to spread the message of agape love to every individual, every family, every community, and every organization. The Love Umbrella Network currently has the teaching arm, the communities and projects arm. The mission of the teaching arm is to teach the principles of agape love and help people grow into maturity of love in all aspects of their lives, with loved ones through sparkles of love and with their communities through love and light. The Love and Light is a teaching platform for bringing men into the understanding of practical dimensions of love and the power of love. The community arm connects people of similar passion, values, and goals. The Ephesians 525 men and Proverbs 31 women helps provide mutual encouragement for couples, as well as mutual growth towards attaining personal goals and corporate goals. The singles community called Love Culture provides singles with resources, ideas, and opportunities to become rooted and grounded in their understanding and practice of agape love before getting married. The LoveWorks Arm provide help to distressed families and communities through LoveWorks Charity. Through research and development, LoveWorks also initiates innovative dialogues by assembling and challenging great minds to explore novel, efficient, and sustainable solutions. The LoveWorks Institute trains, prepares, and deploys ambassadors of love to impact love in different communities around the world. Watch out for more interesting programs from the Love Network. For more information, please stay connected to our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube using the handle Love Umbrella. You can also send us a message via email, loveumbrella at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Media. Thank you, Media, for that video. Uh, I now know that everyone, now we all know what LUN is all about. So uh, if you can, please just hit the chat box and tell us LUN is about, and you tell us what you've learned from the video. Okay, uh, one important thing, my name is Kimberly Munonawafa, and I'm going to be your MC. I'm going to walk you throughout the whole event. So I'm Kimberly Munonawafa. I'm from Zimbabwe. And if you're just joining us uh, just now, welcome to Sparkles of Love Season 5. And our theme is Understanding Differences. Why are we so different? So if you're just joining us now, welcome. Please make sure you tell us where you're joining from uh, in the chat. And also remember to keep your mic muted and your, your video closed. 
Thank you so much. Okay, now, without wasting it, my, much time, we're going to uh, watch a bed and video uh, by Dr. Victor, and you will be speaking on differences in marriage. So um, over to you, Media, for the video. Hello there, my name is Victor Adewi, and on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. V, we'd like to invite you to Sparkles of Love Season 5, where we'll be talking about differences in marriage. And this is not just for married couples alone, but also people that are dating or preparing for marriage. Understanding of personal differences and how to manage it effectively is one of the most important skills in marriage, and it affects almost every other aspect, including the quality of communication couples have, their intimacy, and even the productivity they enjoy. These differences ranges from differences in preferences of general likes and dislikes, hobbies and interests, to differences in how they see life, usually based on how they have been programmed, either culturally, socially, genetically, or even based on gender differences. And also, of course, we have differences based on how people want things to be done, their work ethics. Some prefer to work alone in silence, while some prefer to work where there's noise because they think better, they focus better. There are also differences in people's perception of danger or their ability to see ahead. While some are able to sense danger from afar and they tend to be scared and worried about what is coming. Meanwhile, their partner sometimes unaware and nonchalant and unconcerned. So depending on how couples understand themselves, some of these things tend to build up friction and decrease their intimacy. If you have some of this in your relationship already, I guess you already know what I'm talking about and how it affects satisfaction. But maybe you also have some fears about the future of your marriage based on some of these differences or you're wondering if you ever be able to work together as a couple or as a family to achieve something significant. Why we can't promise you that your partner is going to change? Because it is believed that some of these differences, they don't go away. But one thing that we can assure you is that as you increase in your understanding, you also increasing effective management of your differences. So this season of Sparkles of Love is focused on helping married couples to understand how to take advantage of their differences to build a stronger families and to sensitize singles preparing for marriage to know the things to watch out for and to enrich the conversations of those that are already in a relationship, I mean courtship. You are welcome to join us on March 1st. We are hosting the amazing, inspiring and lovely couples, the Star Wars Lovers, a Christian relationship counselor and content creators and they will be sharing with us insights on how to manage differences in marriage of course sharing their experiences as well we also have special presentations of spoken words poetry by mr said and song by minister daniel it will be a most impactful unforgettable experience please you are welcome to be a part of our family by joining us to spread the word and helping us to be stronger families see you on march 1st Today is the day. Today is the day we're going to witness all this. Uh, it's going to be pa 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 powerful. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, let me see. Uh, I can see Cephas. Thank you so much for joining. I can see Christian. Thank you so much for joining, Christian. I can see Sister Eunice. Thank you so much for joining. Wow, I can see a lot of people just joined. I can see uh, Stella, Tikkuni Stella. Thank you so much for joining. I can see Reynard. Thank you so much for joining. Wow. Please make sure you tell us where you're joining from in the chat. So you just tell us if you're joining from Beijing, if you're joining from uh, Wuhan, you just tell us you're joining from Wuhan. Thank you so much for joining and welcome to Sparkles of Love season five. Our theme is understanding differences. So now we are going to watch a video uh, and this video is going to be a spoken word video from Mr. Seth. Mr. Seth. So please people prepare yourselves. This is going to be powerful. So uh, over to you, media, for the video. Hello, everyone. My name is Seth Silupumbwe. I'm your brother and friend from Wuhan International Christian Fellowship. I was privileged by LUN, the leaders of LUN, Pastor Victor, I salute you, sir. Uh, I was privileged to 
uh, be invited to share a spoken word on the topic at hand. The topic is understanding differences. Why are we so different? <laughs> I love the stress and the soul. Uh, but the Lord placed few words in my heart that I would love to share. And I believe um, someone will be blessed. So please lend me your ear. Thank you. Then the two became one. See, that's a mystery over there. How can two become one? They are different. But unless they agree to walk together, the two can be, come one. So this mystery lies in agreement, choosing to believe in another despite cultural differences, saying, I will love you in the midst of our preferences. Agreement reconciles every single argument. It flushes out toxic doubt until it's permanent. Fusing together two different perspectives with a bond of love. Out of two, making one valuable instrument. Like two different islands, at a distance in mind and speech, yet creating a bridge that connects them both for generations to walk on. Two sides coming together in perfection, establishing a path that they can both walk with love, trust, and arms locked. The two must be of light, though. Do not be unequally yoked, remains our faithful anthem. So don't pick a dead corpse for a mate, that's irresponsible. For what relationship has darkness with light? None. The two are incompatible, flesh and spirit, life and death. It has been so from the beginning. Darkness never comprehends the workings of light. So why get a husband that can never understand your submission, or a wife that is blinded to your labor of love? See, the light of Christ brings life to a couple. It ignites every candle, reflecting sparkles of love in every angle. So our negotiation is true and simple. For two to walk together, they must be alive. He or she must first come to the light, possessing a mind like Christ, a place where differences are in clear sight. Nothing hides, naked but unashamed in each other's eyes. A place where love speaks loudest. And I roof like this, differences are easier to handle. It's a picture full of beauty, one that checks your personality, provoking you to adaptability. It humbles you to tame your tongue and renew your mind to God's design, opening your heart to be teachable, making you a partner that is different, yet reliable and compatible, humble in all ways, and a listener at all times. So, can two walk together? Oh yes they can. The Christ factor makes this possible. Because now they live, alive in His grace, responsive to each other's needs. Their eyes can now see the differences at hand as an ingredient for a greater bond. Minds no longer hostile, so love can lead. As a couple, you might be different, but never be ignorant. Ignorance would shock the last breath of your vows. It would place you on slippery grounds and wait for you to soon lose your balance. Give your attention to her. Listen to him. Bring your differences to the table. Talk about them. Pray about them. Laugh about them. Have a meal over them. Yes, they cannot be you without them. But be willing to change harmful traits. Let's twist it this way. In your differences, stand together to make a difference. A journey full of purpose and romance, bringing glory to Abba and setting an example for others. Then the two became one. See, that's a mystery over there. How can two become one? They are different. But unless they agree 
to walk together in love, the two can be come one. A beautiful thing is what it's called. Thank you so much. powerful that was a powerful ministration from mr seth thank you thank you so much thank you so much if you had one line just one line please make sure you write it in the chat box i want to see if you guys were listening if you remember one line just write it down in the chat box thank you so much if you're just joining us welcome to sparkles of love season five and our theme is understanding differences. So as you can see, we're going to be witnessing those powerful ministrations throughout the night. And uh, please make sure you follow Mr. Seth. His IG handle will be highlighted in the chat. So please you make sure you follow him on uh, Instagram. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, now we're going to move on. But before I hand over to the next person, make sure that you have your notebooks, your pens uh, with you so that you write down everything you're going to learn. Because soon after this, we're going to hear from our main speakers. So now I'm going to invite the Vs. The Vs are going to help us introduce the speakers. So uh, over to you, Mr. and Mrs. V. All right. Hello. Please, can we be heard? Yes, we can hear you. Wow, please. If you know the MC is doing amazing, just drop. Use some fire <laughs> to fire. Show us some fire of love in the uh, Big Brother arena is giving you rockets. They are taking you to mass. <laughs> All right, uh, we celebrate you. And that was a powerful ministration by Minister Seth. I mean, in those words, uh, I, I wonder how he picks those words to see if they are from this, you know, uh, this planet. Uh, we well, definitely. From a different realm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, God bless you. And um, we are so excited about today uh, because uh, this is. Uh, this is something that we've been looking forward to for a while. Someone now. said we are looking great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Me. All right. Thank you. She is looking great. You are looking great. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so we 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 are not um uh, ministering per yes. se. All right, but uh All as right. we are introducing the Star Wars lovers whom we are waiting for. All right. Uh, we also have some things to share. We actually discovered, all right, that um, we have written considerably yeah. about the differences so. in our book. So this thing has been <laughs> this thing has been something that we have been battling with. Is it battling with now? <laughs> well, managing, <laughs> <laughs> managing, learning, learning about for quite a while now. And uh, so it is. It was in our spirit. We didn't even know, you know, all those things when we decided that that was the theme of the event. Sure. All right. So we just go over some of the differences. All right. Yeah. Just to prepare our heart. All right. Mm -hmm. For what is to come. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, meanwhile, um, Doctor Me, you can just notify us when uh, the yes. Star Wars lovers uh, uh, arrive, so that we can hand over to hand them. over to them. All right. So, but, but don't worry. We we have so much even here, <laughs> all right, that is going to be a blessing. Yeah. All right. So, um, well, to start with, so we'd like to list some of our differences. You know, the thing is, you wanted to something. Yeah, well, I wanted to say that, you know, for those that are in long-distance long relationship, our, our relationship started on the long distance, all right? And, you know, all those who are... Uh, I would I would be speaking with my wife, you know, on the phone, and <laughs> I just have my own assumptions until we got together, you know, and that was where <laughs> that was where I had the spirit of revelation. <laughs> And I had the spirit of revelation, you know. So all those kind of differences that you could think about mm -hmm. were things that we really, really, really had. Yeah. And um, so I remember in the first day of our marriage, all mm -hmm. right, we're still going to do so. Yes, please. This is part of our well, differences. Short, so we have to know <laughs> okay. how long to speak. All right. For how but, long you're going but, to speak. Yeah, let me just let me just add this one. All too. right, sir. So I remember in the first day of our of our marriage, you know, uh, when we started our YouTube channel then, all right. Okay. 
at a point I respected people, couples that had YouTube channel, right? Because I feel um, it takes a lot of cooperation to uh, work together, especially if you have different temperaments. So henceforth, anyway, I see any couples, you know, doing those things together consistently, uh, consistently back, to back. back to back. I I really respect them because I believe I think really it takes a lot of sacrifice. So I'm not trying to scare you if you are if you are venturing into a project mm -hmm. together as a couple. In fact, that, those are those. <laughs> Am I scary people? I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right. Actually, those are some of the things that we advocate for. All right. Mm -hmm. That power couples, like couples, you know. Yeah, because a, a lot of times the voices that are loud, yeah, you know, they are the ones from the different from the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. And people don't a lot of people feel that having not so great marriage is a norm. True. Or seeing divorce everywhere is a norm, which is not necessarily true because yeah. there are good and great marriages but yeah. it's just that they are not really voicing out yeah. so we advocate for people to just if you know you have a good marriage of course have the necessary skills and everything so you don't mislead people yeah. but if you know you have a great marriage you have things working for you you yeah. know please voice out let people know that it's possible to enjoy yeah. marriage yeah so we need ambassadors yeah of good marriages exactly exactly all right, all right so very shortly, because I think I saw a notification that the speakers are around. So very shortly, before we introduce them, we'd like to just let you know that, you know, a lot of them, when, when people hear me, they be like, oh, um, what did they call? Um, relationship goals. What other words did they use? Oh, the good words. That's the thing. My husband is not so in tune <laughs> Relationship goals, power couple, and oh, couple. Thank you, Makafi. Oh, couple, you know, but they don't they don't get to see the work behind the glamour. Which work? I'm the one being able the work. to manage the differences. I'm the one managing. Right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, so the thing is, we are just trying to say we are not portraying ourselves to be perfect. You know, yes, we are putting in the work. You know, but there are differences that we also get to work work on. You know, there are differences we get to, yeah, we get to work on. So we just want to list out those differences. And some, you might resonate with some of them. And it, again, we'll prob I'll probably, we will probably talk about some of the things that has worked for us in terms of managing our differences. So first of all, now, when we talk about differences, I, I would like to put this out there. It's not differences in values, you know, differences in um um some essential things like your faith values of course not those kind of differences because yeah. scripture already says it that can two work together and say they, they, they agree you know yeah. so those are major agreements that yeah. need to be there you yeah. know compatibility in those areas are yeah. very very key but yeah. there are some differences like personality difference yeah. you know gender difference of course as as a lady and as a guy we are both different yeah. you know cultural differences for places like china we, we have intercultural relationship yeah. intercultural marriages so those differences will pop up yeah so for us for instance personality differences starts with my husband is very spontaneous and i'm not spontaneous <laughs> well let me say i'm not so spontaneous we have changed over the years <laughs> yeah because sometimes when i need to be i can't be spontaneous but it's not my default setting, but it's default setting is spontaneity, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times we add a lot of disagreement because my husband can just come and say, babe, can you help me with this? I'm like, you didn't tell me, <laughs> you didn't tell me, you know, I like to plan ahead, you know, so it's very spontaneous and I don't know if you have anything to say about that. Well, I think, I think the table <laughs> is turning around now. <laughs> All right, yeah. you can go. And that's the good thing. But, but, but sorry, let me just say a shout out to um our main speakers for the, the day, the Star Wars lovers. Yeah, they're, here. they're here. What we are doing is just wetting the ground for you guys, and we want to say thank you in advance for the sacrifice. It is around 5 30 a.m. Yes. in Ontario right yeah. now, so it does a lot of sacrifice. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. And we can't here. wait to see you and to hear from you. Yes. All right, we want to wet the ground very well <laughs> so that uh the, you will shake the table very well when you when you come. All right. All right. Thank you so much. We really All right. So sorry about that. Okay. So my husband is a go getter. Well, I'm a little laid back, and then 
some little little things like oh liking um hot tea my husband likes hot tea and anytime he serves me tea or any anything in fact not just tea anything my husband serves it really hot and i'm like this will burn my tongue it's it's exactly... fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you have to be on fire <laughs> you know and little things like that um is extrovert or he, he thinks he's not but i think he's extroverted why i'm more introverted you know it's all about making new friends you know i think i'm spiritverted <laughs> it impacts people a lot you know spontaneously once you see someone he wants to pause out into, into the person why me i'm like trying to observe first of all you know trying to see oh can i really work with this person you know do we really gel but he is all out there so he's extroverted he's not so detailed but me i can be very detailed that's why when he does something i'm, I'm pointing out the mistakes <laughs> babe you didn't do it like you didn't appreciate me first <laughs> you know and he loves people around you know he loves people he loves thank people. you that person is in the spirit <laughs> we are we are we are still reverted yes you need to okay it's actually part of it but go on he loves people being around well me i don't mind having people around but it can be a little draining for me when we have a lot of people and i'm smiling by force i'm you know i'm just making everywhere lively you know and after when they are gone, um, you feel drained. I feel I'm um, telly. I feel drained. I'm like, see, let me just rest. But he loves people around, and he gives him a lot of energy. You know, he wants the lights on. Even as a matter of fact, I I, I really I want I discovered one of my um skills recently, like preparing food for people when they yeah. come around. You know, the thing is, before yeah, it was a lot of work for me. Yeah. Because I feel like I need to plan ahead. Yeah. Every the house needs to be spotless before yeah. visitors arrive. Yeah. But now, because of course, baby has arrived. So you have an excuse now. I, not that I have an excuse. <laughs> I, do those, I can't afford to do those things. Yeah. Uh, but I, I actually take a lot of pleasure. And one of the reasons why I take a lot of pleasure is now I can bring the whole world mm -hmm. and as Nami, can you Nami, take Nami, responsibility as well as I take responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's just our differences and then and then there's one major one my husband is a preacher you know when my husband wants to correct something oh my god oh god <laughs> my husband we we share this long sermon it's, it's all men i'm like just every, straight to the point every man that is here is guilty of that it's not my care please you support me when you are speaking i'm like just go straight to the point, please. What exactly are you trying to say? So, so what is it? You'll be like, okay, okay, okay. So this is what I'm trying to say. But me, I can be so spot on. Babe, this is it. I don't like it. This is what you did. This is what you did. And it's like, you need to tell me the reason why I have to change. Because if I'm trying to correct something. I don't have the time to... Thank you, Jale. You see, my care has supported <laughs> I think it's a man thing. Don't worry. That was a gender thing. Okay, it's a gender thing. So I don't have the time to start explaining everything in details. Okay, do it this way because of this. Do it this way because... I'm like, just do it. It's like, no. No, just explain, you know. So those are some of the... There are lots and lots of differences, you know, that I can list out. But in summary, these differences can fall into several areas like gender difference, cultural difference, background differences, you know, even age difference, you know. So it's 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 very, very vast and, and interwoven in a way. But of course we are all we are all here to learn. But some of the things that I believe can help is um being intentional about working out those differences, you know um let me let me explain this way for instance and this is something i'm actually guilty about if my husband is trying to point out something mm -hmm. and i'm like um this is what i'm trying to say but, but oh i don't have the strength and he's like let's talk this through let's let's ex let's ex sort this out i'm like Anyways, I don't have the strength. So the, what I'm trying to say is intentionality is very important. Why are you smiling? I'm just smiling. <laughs> when you said I'm the preacher, no, I've not spoken the words. <laughs> all right, all right. But uh, <laughs> so, I'm sorry, please. No, 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 no. Uh, 
Well, I think the revelation for me, I, I have discovered that in the recent time, not even um, just in the home, all right? I found out that people that say they don't talk, uh, when they have the opportunity to preach, just give them extra time <laughs> because they are going to pass that time. And they will tell you that they have not finished even with extra time. Please go on, baby. <laughs> yeah. All right. So be intentional. Oh, my God. So be intentional about um, working out the differences you know, no matter how stressful it can be, because yeah. you know, having to sort out those differences can be stressful sometimes, especially when it has to do with um, background differences, because some of the things that you're trying to correct, they've been, they've, they grew up with it, you know, for a very long time, so it, it doesn't, the changes don't just come automatically like that, but then please be ready to put in the work, yeah, and then appreciate the differences as well, you know, because sometimes those differences are these are things that attracted you to your spouse. True. Uh, yeah, you see? So we must not <laughs> complain about those things again. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't just take this anymore. You can't, can't. <laughs> you know, so appreciate the differences. Just a lot of things that, but these are some of the things that has helped us. I don't have the time to share, but... We'll just introduce our special guests, the Star Lovers. Um, my husband will introduce them. Yeah, I, I have a lot to say, but um, uh, probably I believe there will still be more opportunities to say that. But what I would just say is that I love and respect them yeah. so, for, so, so, so much. For their consistency. Uh, oh not not God. just the consistency. For me, it's the consistency. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now I'm becoming emotional. <laughs> well, and that's that's one of our differences. I am emotional. She's not. Well, are you? Are you emotional? Well, it depends. Really. Really, but yeah, people you think know, I'm the tough guy, but really, I'm really the the very soft guy in the house. And that was one of the things that I felt really hard and weird sometimes. Like, hmm, yeah, the man. How come you're emotional? <laughs> right. Men, men have emotions too. <laughs> All right, please. Um, the um the PPT media team. Uh, yeah. let's let's bring in um Uncle Boo and Auntie B. Yeah. All right. So I can go. Right? Yes, I wanted to, to say okay, something. So that, well, well, before we read the PPT, I'd like to mention that I think both of them, I can't remember, both um Faith and Michael were. We attended the same university. Let me do some fans, fans in a little. We attended the same university. I actually knew Michael, but I didn't. I didn't know Faith. But we are just privileged to have them, you know, in our midst here. So you can. Go yeah, well, but the Michael that we knew is not the Michael <laughs> now. The Michael now is the Star Wars lovers, yeah. all right. And uh, we really celebrate and honor the grace of God upon them. All right, uh, I want to go over Faith and Michael. I mean, there's a whole lot about them on the social media. All right, um, they are popularly known as the Star Wars Lovers. They are certified relationship coaches on a mission to inspire young people in making sound marital decisions and experiencing genuine love as intended by God. People have been saying that when they come on our program, um, they get into relationship. Now we're about to enter into the next level now. As the Star Wars lovers come like this, you just be your eyes will just open, everything will just clear, you'll just be seeing them clear, clear. This is the right person, this is the wrong person. All right, so well, that's a prophetic statement. You can, you can receive it <laughs> as content creators, but you know there's a grace on every year now. Of course, I know. All right. As content creators with a fast growing YouTube channel, all right, with over hundred thousand and social media channels, they share inspiring content on faith, relationship, and lifestyle, all right, and vlogging, interesting vlogs, all right. Um, the Star Wars lovers have been happily married for three years, and by June, they will be four years, and blessed with a son, Joshua Anolua, Anolua Michael Fabi, uh, whom I call General Joshua, all right, um, with so much joy, with Jesus' joy, I would like us to make welcome uh, the Star Wars lovers and um, the Star Wars lovers, please, if you are there, we hand over to you, Mr. Michael, Uncle, Uncle Boo, and Auntie B. I'm very careful calling so that I don't, I don't swap it. <laughs> wow, good to see you, family. Good to see you. Hi guys, Hi. good to see you. Good to see, good to see you. you. So 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 good to have 
to be on your on your platform. I hope you're doing great. How's the baby? Baby is fine. It's, it's cooperating. It's cooperating here. Yeah, it's sleeping. That's awesome. Our, our baby spent the night with us, which means we didn't have uh, so much time to sleep. To sleep. <laughs> but we've given him to grandma now. So after the program, we'll find a way to go sleep. But it's really a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. I know yeah. This, this, Thank this you for the sacrifice. Time. I mean, uh, with uh, mama just, you know, uh, putting to bed just a few days ago and you are here. Amen. You are the real. <laughs> Yeah, so we thank God for strength. Thank God. So it's really a pleasure to be with you all. Mm -hmm. I will have said to this morning, but it's tonight <laughs> with some of you. <laughs> but it's good. Um, give me a second. Yeah, so it's really a pleasure to be with you, and we'll be going to the teaching quite briefly. Um, we wouldn't take too much time. I know we have 30 minutes. We plan to use just that. What's the time now? 6.08. Um, all right. Um, to everyone who is watching, thank you for being here. I believe that you're going to be so blessed. And um, the word of the Lord would meet you exactly where you need it. Amen. In Jesus' name. So let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you thank for the privilege to share your word, to teach, to share wisdom and nuggets uh, from experiences, from wisdom in your word that is able to help us grow, that is able to ignite a fire, ignite hope, and, 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 and just help people who are struggling, people who need this message. We have an understanding that you put this program together and you have a purpose uh, for which you've done this. And I pray in the name of Jesus that as we speak, light to be shown on people's hearts mm -hmm. and there would be understanding. Mm -hmm. People would have understanding to help even in their differences in Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, let's get on to it. So the theme is a question. Why are we so different? And it's a very good question to ask because we understand that almost in everything in life, you need to work with people. And at different times in your life, you've worked with difficult people, people who are different than you, people who see the world uh, different from the way that see you see the world. Which is why this question is very timely, especially for people who are either in the relationship or married, or even if you're single, it's, uh, it's, um, whatever we're sharing today is something to put in to mind, uh, preparing for the days ahead. Yeah. And so I'm going to start from Genesis chapter two, verse 24, Genesis chapter two, verse 24. It says therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh that's god's design god himself uttered these words that therefore a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the both of them would then become one flesh. So we, we see that marriage happens when two people, in this case, a man and a woman, <laughs> it's important to, to stress that in the world that we live in today. Marriage happens when two people are joined together, effective immediately. The world expects you to live together, work together, work together, procreate together, raise family, raise children together, and just do it seamlessly. Everybody just expects you, you know, to, to be good at it. <laughs> Two different people. And if you just know what to do, but really that's marriage that two people work together. So why are we so different? Why yeah, are you so different? To work together. <laughs> because you are expected to work together. And so the obvious first reason why you are so different we're going to just give two reasons why you're different and then we'll go deeper into the reasons the first reason is because well you are two people you're not one you are two different people 
and you see no two people are the same no two people are the same even identical twins that have a lot of similarities in their genetic makeup a lot of similarities in you know their physiological structure to the very intricate part of their life they are different their biometric compositions are different they have different fingerprints different iris uh and i know that no two human beings on the earth are the same talk less of two genders two people who grew up from different localities who grew up from you know different parents lived their life separated from each other exposed to different worlds brought up in different ways how wouldn't you be different how wouldn't you you definitely would be different so you see that's one thing to know embracing that difference and understanding that we're different because well we are different we're not the same mm -hmm. and we're going to go deeper into how to navigate all these things but it's important to tell you that it's not a problem that you're different it's not a problem that you know your spouse likes to you know press the toothpaste from the center but you like it all organized it's not a problem that it seems like whenever you are thinking about doing something you want to go this way and your spouse sometimes sees it this way yeah. it's not a problem that's the design all right so it's obvious that the both of you are two and you are working to become one flesh genesis 2 verse 24 which leads me to the second reason why excuse me why you are so different because god designed it that way yeah somebody mm -hmm. say amen can i get amen in the caption in the, in the <laughs> comment section god designed it that way you see whenever you feel so exhausted whenever you feel like this man oh my god oh this woman ugh. just remember that that was god's plan <laughs> god designed that two different people will come together and with the powerful tool called marriage and called love they will become one it's not just in being one physically or carnally in the in in, in their flesh it is being one in their mindset in how they relate be having a united front being them against the world you know navigating their lives together and that's the beauty of marriage you see if god took two different people who have been shaped to perfectly fit then marriage would not be fun would it mm. because you see you think that oh if only we could be perfect fit and we just meet and you just know exactly how to love me you know exactly what to do to make me happy you know how i like to arrange my things without you telling me wow that's some miraculous stuff and we know that god even though yes he's a miracle worker worker he's not a magician mm -hmm. right there are there is all that there are things that god has put in place structures he has put in place to help and see the beauty in creation and so remember that god designed it that way that mm -hmm. two different people would come together mm -hmm. and become one unanimous in how they think in how i mean there was a time someone asked me a question uh, about a relationship or something like that yeah. and i had given an answer and i was certain i'm not i think it even happened and for some reason my wife was asked the question without my <laughs> my notice i didn't share my answer with my wife i was i was there when my wife was answering and my wife was almost using my words word for word and in the in the areas where she didn't use my words word for word you could tell that she she meant exactly the same thing that's the unity we're talking about that the both of you have learned to work together and you have a unanimous idea about what you want to do and so um amos 3 3 that is the anchor text talked about how two cannot work together except they are in agreement we're going to dwell more on this uh towards the end of our teaching so for now let's i'm going to hand it over to my wife let's explore some common differences what's your pen can you hear me is there, is there an issue with the hearing 
Ini saya lagi. Apa kabar? Yeah, I'm breaking. I don't know whether they confused. So your mic is breaking, but you can send the chat. Send it as a chat so you so we don't uh, get interrupted. Um, so I can't hear you are breaking. Can someone drop in the chat if you can hear me? Okay, so definitely it's it's your internet. Um, we're seeing the chats here, so if you have anything to say, just drop in the chat, and then we could take a post to take that. Thank you for that. Um, I was saying I'm going to pass it to my wife, my beautiful, adorable, <laughs> best thing in the world, best woman in the world, mother of my child, <laughs> <laughs> to take us from here, talking about common differences uh, that exist between couples or lovers. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Viv. Um, that was profound. Okay. That was a profound word. And something really struck me with what you said. And that just reminds me, reminded me of a lot of things. And that was the question that someone asked and i literally answered in the exact almost exact words you know and this is just the beautiful um goal that we have for you in mind that is that is the real crux of the matter that is the point you know and I mean, this, you cannot get to this point without actually understanding the differences. So we'll just be mentioning some common differences between couples, um, common differences that you would find among people that if you're able to actually take note of, if you're able to, you know, crack and harness, you know, it would really go a long way in bringing that to getting you to that point of unity, getting you to that point of oneness, of true oneness, you know. Um, so the first thing I would like to mention here is there are differences in roles between couples, there are differences in roles, and it is very important to understand this because it's very important to understand this so that you can navigate. So let me put it this way. If you are not able to, if you don't understand your roles, let's say you are a boss and an employee, if you don't understand the roles of a boss, the roles of an employee, there will definitely be issues with that relationship. Mm -hmm. There is no relationship, let's say pastor and congregant, let's say um, mother and child, mother and child um, any, any relationship whatsoever, even friends, if you don't understand what you are here for, you know, it's going to be an issue trying to even navigate the relationship as a whole. Um, Ephesians 5, 22 to 28 says, you know, talks about husbands loving their wives talks about wives submitting to their husbands this mm. is a very prime example of rules right it's of the kind of rules that we have just the fact that this is husband and this is wife the in in, in the marriage covenant it is it's literally two different things mm -hmm. love loving your wife and then submitting to your husband and there are reasons for that for the, for those differences there are reasons there are reasons just as my husband said earlier god made it that way god made it that way and he knew what he was doing right so i mean it goes without saying in this world that we are in today sometimes you see it that some relationships break as also relationships go on that duress go into issues mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the wife or the husband doesn't understand this rule the husband does not understand that he's meant to love his wife like christ loved the church that kind of love that can that can die for mm. you know the way christ died for the church and gave himself for the church so men don't understand this kind of love this kind of selfless i mean we can't really go into it you can't really teach go deeply into it because you just need to touch it and go right because we have limited time, but there's a kind of love that God expects from men. And if men are not able to understand this as a rule, then there's going to be issues. For a woman too, it is very important that she knows that this man is ahead, just as, you know, Christ is the head of the church, mm -hmm. right? So it is very important to know, understand these differences. Another common difference between couples is their temperament is their personality right so when you 
find this i i mean i could relate to yeah, a lot of things that we were saying you know this temperament thing you're introverted you're extroverted you like to you know you like to be around people the other person likes to just have their own space and i beg everybody i'm already getting tired i'm getting exhausted so you guys are here for three hours so you are when, are you, when, when are you leaving when are you leaving you know when are you leaving i need to who leave. is the when are you leaving among the both of us well that's me yeah <laughs> it goes without saying I, I, he is kind of like the people person right so yeah. i mean i feel like i think i've heard someone actually say it before that i think it was pastor kingsley and pastor Miro that you know in all their years of experience they realize that human beings are just copies of each other <laughs> You would always find it's either the it's it's either it's the wife that is this way in one marriage or the husband is the other way in the, like it's the, it's like we just copied each other we're just copies like we're copies. built to attract our opposites exactly <laughs> exactly there's always this maybe a more outward person and there's this more inward person it's just like a yin and yang kind of balance right mm. so um yes people of opposite temperaments attract each other according to research it's well known fact people of opposite temperament opposite personalities they tend to attract each other and there's a reason for this most times when they are different that is when they attract because it kind of brings a balance it kind of brings a balance to yeah. like you know it brings that that spice i mean just imagine if an introvert is in the room as an introvert, I can relate to this. Maybe that maybe I'm maybe because I can relate that I'm speaking from this point. <laughs> As an introvert, I can relate to this. As an introvert, if you find another introvert in a room, let's say you're the only two people in the room or the two, only two people in that in the, within the same vicinity, it would be cool to see that okay, yeah, this person gets me, this person definitely understands me and all that. But after saying, Oh, hello, <laughs> how are you doing? Me. Hi um you know after just a few conversations we'll both get tired of talking and we'll just keep quiet and the whole room will just be quiet right because there's I'm no that, there's no person exactly i'm boring because there's nobody that is that has that intrinsic ability to drive a conversation you know and same as an extrovert two of you are just going to get tired we'll of talk ourselves to death. <laughs> literally because nobody's able to bring that balance of quietness and things like that yeah. so yeah so i i hope you guys have gotten this this difference is a very huge one is a very huge one but if you can understand it mm -hmm. sometimes you just need to actually get to just understand your partner that this is really just how they are yeah this, this really is how they are and like like uh like the v said you know the, our differences are really what makes us beautiful yeah and so the fact that you're introverted but you are married to an extroverted spouse that's really the balance in your house imagine yeah. if both of you are introverts. Nobody will visit you. Nobody will be happy to be around you. Nobody will feel at home around you. And so just embracing that difference is, is yeah, crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. Yeah, and the third one I would like to mention, common differences among couples, is their engineering. And when I say engineer, I don't mean um, civil, civil engineering engineer. or chemical <laughs> engineering. I, this is, so this has to do with people's wiring. So what is their perception of life? what is their upbringing you know the thing the way the person is wired you know to see life right you know it could be as a result of the family they grew up in you know how they were raised the country they were raised their tribe you know the locality they were raised in you know the ideologies the prevailing ideologies in that environment hmm. no. right <laughs> <laughs> you know what what you know you, you, these are things that you need to also note that these are differences you need to understand that the way someone sees life, the way someone, okay, some people, maybe in their tribe or in their locality, let's say the Yorubas now, because we are Nigerians, among the Yorubas, a woman, you know, would kneel down to greet, a man would prostrate to greet, or there are some tribes that cannot relate. <laughs> What's up? And some tribes, they're on this, like this, they greet you like this, you know, so many things like that. I think in China, I, I think they greet this way. Or something like that. I really don't know. Konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stop it. <laughs> you know. So we have so many differences like that, and there's some differences like that that all it takes is for you to realize that okay, it's just because this is how this person sees it. While you are trying to make them see that it's really not that deep, mm -hmm. you also need to understand that 
and also let it go sometimes that i mean it's fine um we may not see eye to eye on this on matter, everything on everything so it is very important to take note of these things i'll just let my husband go ahead with the rest of the all right time. so we'll just talk about a few more then we'll move to how you can navigate this because of yeah. time yeah. um another common difference among spouses is their love language or expression so and that's simply how you perceive love and how you express love and for many people um this could vary like like my wife said based on engineering how they are brought up or just their personality um it's common for introverts to just love gifts most of the time um as as funny as it is most introverts love quality time even though in that quality time they do less of the talking yeah so um some, so it's so it could stem from your personality or from your engineering but you see we express love differently we receive love differently people always talk talk about <laughs> i should say last yes people always talk about um love language from how you um receive love. receive love nobody really expresses nobody talks about how you express love you see the fact that i'm in love with my wife and she receives love a type of way that's one do i give love do i express love that type of way that's two yeah and we can be so well, different language do you speak? yes because language is a is a it's a bilateral now or oh, it's a two-way communication let me not speak any english <laughs> that i cannot say <laughs> i mean you know fun fact guys my love language, the love language that I was weakest in giving was the love language he was strongest in receiving. Guys, yeah. just imagine that. Just imagine that. Conundrum. Like the top <laughs> of my list of how you can show me that you love me is what was the weakest thing for her to do. And we are here today. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a testimony for you guys. If you did that, that, that's something for you to take home that the worst of situations when it comes to love language can still make it work yeah you know what this you know. this video is not about love languages, love languages. so <laughs> we don't go too much into all the details because we want to focus on the topic um another difference is gender difference and that one is plain clear and simple men are different from women wired. men are wired different from women no matter uh, where you come from certain things are common to men than women even though there are outliers i believe myself and mr v we are, we are outliers in a few of them in fact whenever fun fact whenever i'm in a, I'm in a meeting or i'm reading a book and people are talking about um difference between men and women mm -hmm. men, are men are logical men are not emotional women are, i just say am i a man i used to ask myself am, am i a man because i'm emotional i'm relational <laughs> i'm all these things that you guys are saying men are not i guess i'm a prone man a man that has allowed god to work on me um so while your gender differences are valid your spiritual reality is more important so you must allow the spirit control all that <clears throat> ideology and so but it's important to state that there are gender differences yeah, yeah, yeah. the way a man would um relate to life is different from the way a woman really relate to life uh, a woman could be trying to express how she feels to her husband and saying oh babe i don't like the fact that you ate and left the plate without taking to the kitchen or you took to the kitchen but you didn't clean up after yourself and all those things and all the man is seeing is a nagging wife a, a wife that is ungrateful and just complaining and complaining and complaining and should be should be even grateful that she has a roof over her head you know just because the presentation of a matter matters a lot to men you can say the right thing you can complain all you want if you complain the wrong way you are in trouble because you are wrong you know, I remember in our relationship, you know, it, it showed up many times. My wife will be trying to this exp express herself. And in doing that, she would be absolutely rude. According to me, in her mind, she isn't. And for me, the patience was just to, and we're going to talk about this very soon because of time. For me, I just had to learn to allow her finish what she wants to say so that I can now express you know relate to what she said 
clear that out and then tell her that although while you are telling me what you told me you are rude you know because a man is men are big on respect uh women are big on you know nurturing them and caring for them and and many more like that we can't go into all the intricate details but it's important to highlight that you are different because you are different genders as well be yeah. open to that understand that and then find how to work together now why is this important and i think we might shoot a little bit above the 30 minutes mark i'm sorry i'm i'm very <laughs> i'm trying to rush because of the time uh, just give us a little extra minute um why is it important to know these differences number one so you have a clear understanding of what you're in for you see you are different accept it all right don't go into marriage believing that your spouse will just get you or your spouse will be like you you are different accept it you see that's why we've talked about some of these differences another reason is so that you can learn that you have to be intentional to now work together god designed that two different people will become one so you need to realize that work has to be done so you go into marriage or if you're in marriage already you go through your marriage with the idea that I have work to do and I will do that work. I'll let my wife take over. Yeah, so um, yeah, so we've had a very beautiful discussion already about the differences, why you're so different, you know, common differences, you know, and I mean what you are in for, this is this is this is this is your life now. You have work to do, right? So we'll just be discussing some of that work that you need to do. You need to work to make God's design possible to make it happen for you because it's it is possible, guys. It is possible. Mm -hmm. I need you to believe it. I need you to believe it that you can actually put in that work. You it is not too difficult for you. Like I need you to say to yourself, it is not going to be too difficult for me. I can put in the work. I will put in the work, right? You know, and so one of the first things, first steps to take in putting in that work is to get in to understand your spouse better, get in to know your spouse and understand them better. So the first thing I would like to mention in that area is communication. As cliche as it sounds, <laughs> I know people always say communication, communication. <laughs> Guys, communication is actually key. Just as people always say communication is key. Communication is key you how do you get to know and understand the person someone if you don't communicate effectively if mm. you don't actually talk to them spend time to talk and you know relate the issues rub minds discuss it what is the issue what are the problems discuss it communicate your heart communicate your mind that is the only way you can actually get to know your spouse and that is the way they can get to know and understand you you know you have to be patient with your spouse because all these things that we are saying right just as my husband said he had to be patient with me you know when we are talking and something comes off to you instead of compounding the matter and just flaring up and saying that oh this thing that you are saying just stop 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 stop, stop. the way you are talking right now is annoying me <laughs> <laughs> you know you could actually let them finish and then because if you are if your real goal is to solve the problem solve the issue understand them get to know them very well if that is your real goal then you wouldn't be so fixated on how they are saying what they are saying but on what they are actually trying to say and pass across but then eventually still correct them you know it's very important it's very important to be patient it's very important to be patient because they will not change overnight even if there are some things they need to fix and tweak and blend and modify they cannot change overnight they will need to be patient with them as they are correcting them and don't say oh i corrected you yesterday you are doing it again today mm -hmm. it takes time it's like wiring is your brain your brain has been wired to a way so it has to be rewired and retrained like ai the way you train ai <laughs> with data you have to retrain it yeah retrain absolutely. it retrain absolutely. the brain retrain the brain before they now start to actually think in this other direction right yeah so be patient with them and then for the couples both of you you have to be teachable that's the third thing i've mentioned teachability is so important guys this is even one thing that i know that 
if you if people actually pay more attention to during dating not even doing dating doing friendship just getting to know the person as a friend if you notice that this person is not teachable just forget it <laughs> yeah it's not going to work blending coming together you know mm -mm. it's not going to be possible because that person will be set in their own ways they are not going to want to listen they are going to just be like this is how i am they're just so hard am. to correct they'll be so you hard to change correct. their mind yes <laughs> so please and please this is i mean i digress <laughs> i went into choosing a life partner but please in choosing someone you have to the person has to be teachable so i mean and in also in this in the same vein in understanding your spouse better you have to be teachable your spouse has to be teachable you have to let the words actually enter you and let the change actually happen you have to let the correction do its work mm -hmm. in you so and then the fourth thing i'd like to mention and it's a very robust topic it's conflict resolution you have to grow in your conflict resolution prowess you have to get good at it it's a skill <laughs> it's, a, it's skill. a skill to learn it's a skill to learn it's a skill to learn because when your partner when that fight happens a lot of things fly out the window yes a lot of things you do you forget yourself sometimes mm -hmm. but when you've trained yourself in conflict resolution when you've grown in conflict resolution You'll be able to remember those things and you will know that you have some ground rules that you have when you are resolving conflicts that guide you that guide you so one of the first things i like to mention is you have to have a mindset that your partner is not out to get you when you are resolving conflicts your partner is you are on the same team it's not your enemy your partner is not your enemy you know you know that being angry with your spouse is not being angry with your spouse is not the the issue is is counter counterproductive to be angry with your spouse right so you have to address the issue as the issue not your spouse you have to see it as my spouse no there's this issue in between us mm. and my spouse is separated from that issue so you are trying to solve the problem and not attack the partner right very important to note have a forward thinking attitude to many things in, a res in the most respectful way possible. Mm. You have to have a forward thinking mindset. You're not trying to dig up issues of the body. You're not trying to poke the person. You're not trying to, you know. And you're not trying to dwell in resentment. Yeah. You see, some people, sorry, if I, I just want to jump in a little yeah. bit. Here. Some people, they, I don't know how they think. Like wickedness. They're just they, wicked. But some of them are wicked. Some of them, they just like suffering. You know, they enjoy basking in resentment, in 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 in, in the pain and the pain. Hurt. You know the way a pig likes to just enjoy the mud. Mm -hmm. I feel like some people are like that. Yeah, it is that annoyance uh, atmosphere. They they love it. They yeah. want it to last a little longer, okay. maybe to prove a point, point. or something. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's one of the most devilish things <laughs> any child of God can think. Yeah, you have experience to. It. Yeah, you have to. You have to watch against it. Right? Yes. So you, you must always have a forward thinking mindset. Okay. We've had an issue or we had a fight or we had an argument. Okay. What's the way forward? Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't, don't want to, don't enjoy that fight. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and I mean, use your use of words is important. Your language in communication is very important. So the fourth thing I'll mention here is set boundaries for arguments and heated conversations. Mm. That's very, important. very important set some ground rules we don't raise our voice at each other we don't raise our voices at each other no, we are having, uh, yes enough. we cannot be violent we cannot raise our hands or fingers or anything on each other we cannot be violent we cannot use foul cards on each other we cannot use past ex experiences to hunt them <laughs> or hurt them we cannot use their weaknesses to hurt them we cannot insult or use I mean, so I'm talking like I'm the court of law. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you used to do. You cannot use derogatory words. Yeah. You know. Some people can. each other. Some people cannot even, within few seconds, stupid. Useless yes, man. Yes, you know. <laughs> because you have of to set ground rules, man. Ground rules. Ground rules. Ground rules. No foul clads, no foul play, no violence, no, you know, you have to approach the matter with peace, with love. You know, just as I said earlier, you're addressing the issue. 
you're not attacking the person mm. right it's very important babe what, what's an example of a foul card that i'm trying to think of one that can just help paint the picture i mean let's say someone has actually done something let's say okay let's even give an example now let's say someone had something in their past mm. they've told you that they actually slept with they, had, they made mistake mistake and they slept with two ladies or they slept with a guy or whatever and then something similar comes up when it seems in your mind you thought that your wife or your husband was flirting with someone in your mind though the way it looked maybe there was this hug the way the hug looks the thing got you in the point you don't want to use that their past to poke them ah that's a foul card you know like hmm, the way you're don't doing do, don't that's, do such things that's how you did with <laughs> yet today and this and that you guys landed in bed <laughs> <laughs> don't do that don't do that and guys i make bold to say even if that person let's say that is a marriage that has survived infidelity and those issues have happened before let's say the person has actually cheated before and the marriage has in survived marriage, yeah. infidelity if that person even makes such mistakes don't like let's say it looks like oh this hug was too tight or this look was flirtatious don't then say oh that was how you did before it's a foul card it's yes. a foul card so and this are, yes it does more damage than good you know so <laughs> number um the fifth thing i like to mention is don't sweep things under the carpet very important discuss the issues if you keep the if you sweep anything under the carpet it's going to come back and haunt you in a bigger way hmm. in fact what is going to happen is you would have a situation whereby an issue happened you search it under the carpet another issue happens then it's gonna compound or add to it and while you're trying to discuss the issue the person is not able to fully have um closure on the matter because th the person doesn't even know that there is this other issue that's that is still, still that's plaguing fueling. them that is fueling their reactions to these other things that you are doing guys i hope what i just said did not just scatter. <laughs> <laughs> i hope it didn't sound confusing right so when you put things under the carpet it compounds it adds it, it never goes away until you discuss it and free your mind yeah that's when it really does go away so be very careful of that don't sweep things under the carpet number six there are jealousy the joy and peace in your home this is so important you have to value peace the peace and the joy above all else you have to value it and guys i mean do, do, don't mind those that you are stressing on conflict resolution this much because it's actually a very big key in resolving those conflicts those those differences don't marry them because differences will make you conflict yes so differences will make you is. so understanding how to then fix those conflicts helps you then on it's like a chain of chain reaction right so guard your peace jealously if you really look at this person you're like i always like there's something i and my husband likes to do oh my god we we hate when there's an issue in fact once there's an issue we are, we are both entered into overdrive of we have to fix this issue because i want to go back to my lovey dovey with you yes i don't want to not talk to you or not be able, not be able to talk to you i'm too in love with you i'm too into you to not want to talk to you for even one second yes so once there's a problem it's like we are both okay let's fix it yeah. we are both <clears> on <throat> let's fix it let's fix it let's fix it immediately i literally have physical reactions when i'm in a situation where i can't talk to my wife i literally have physical like i have headache i have temperature high temperature my body is just not normal I'm like i'm done i'm yeah. done yeah so you need to value that peace so much that you will do all that it takes to actually fix it yeah yeah, yeah. anyway well time is past spent i'm just going to say one last thing on conflict resolution and uh would we'll end it for now we'll take the rest at the question and answers which is that your you have to master your apology languages. You see, people talk about love languages, but there is such a thing as apology languages. The funny thing is, when we came up with this word, we didn't know it was a, a, a thing already. A thing already uh, but because we discovered that there's a type of way I prefer that you apologize to me. And I had to train her. Like, my apologies in three stages. Okay? Sister Fitz, 
<laughs> you must acknowledge what you did. You must commit. You know, you must acknowledge what you did. You must say that you are sorry for what you did and how it made me feel. And you must commit that you will be better next time. If you can do these three things, no matter how short, no matter how, it doesn't have to be many words, but it has to go through these three stages for me to really have a release in my heart. I just discovered that about myself and I communicated it. So all the communication played out, the patience till she understood what to do, played out, the teachability for her to just receive changes, played out, right? But I communicated that and it helped a lot. She knew exactly, when, when I'm angry, she knows exactly what to say, what not to say to and get me. And for me, when I'm angry, I say, I just want to hear I'm sorry. That's all, she's okay with that, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> for, when you start explaining, that's when I'm like, like you just want to explain it away, right? Yeah, but just then, say you're sorry. But then because I, <laughs> I want you to explain, to show me that what you did, you know, you understand the way it pained me. I'll now be explaining. <laughs> Whereas that was making her feel like you're trying to explain a way, you know, just say sorry and go. And that's a difference, you know, just, just to put that there. You have to learn your apology languages. So that's how do you come out of conflict? How do you apologize? How do you come out of it and resolve it as quickly as possible? It's something to master. It's a skill to learn. It's a skill to grow in. And um, one thing will leave you with it. It is possible. Yeah. We did it. Two different people from two different worlds, grew up different places, exposed to different things. Um, by virtue of our age difference as well, exposed to certain things that the other people or the other person is not exposed to. But we made it work because we were patient, we communicated, we prioritized our peace, we grew in how we resolve conflict and we were teachable. All right, amongst many others. So I hope that this has been a blessed session uh for you you can give us feedback in the comment section uh if you are blessed and uh, we would pass it over to the host thank you guys thank you guys okay thank you so much thank you so much uh the short lovers thank you there was a powerful teaching that we got from you ish we got to learn a lot of differences between uh, couples and yeah thank you so much we're really grateful um can you please uh, we want to see if people learned so we want to see if people have a teachable speech so please make sure you just write down something that you got from our speakers just one statement or one important thing can you just show us that you learned something let me check the chat real quick and also if you have any questions you can also uh, jot them down. Apology language, yes. Be, be patient with your spouse. Yes, yes, yes. Differences are beautiful. Yes, wow, powerful. Develop your conflict resolution, resolution uh, pros. Yes, wow, powerful, powerful. Patience, follow your peace and joy. Yeah, as you can see, we have learned, we have learned a lot. I've also learned that you should address the issue, not not attack the person. I learned a lot from that. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are going to hear from our speakers again. Uh, later, we're going to have a question and answer session with the V's and the Stuart lovers. Thank you so much. We're going to call you again later. Now, we are going to... Um, get a live music ministration. You see, joining this EOUN uh, events is very nice. You get to experience this um, powerful ministrations from people. So now we're going to hear from uh, Mr. Daniel Nyanga. Nyanga. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, over to you. Wow. Uh, greetings to you all. It's a blessing to be here today. And I know that each one of us is here for a reason. God bless you, Love Umbrella, for allowing us this opportunity. And the song I'm going to sing says, When God Made You. And uh, through all these differences, we come to realize that uh, the Lord made someone just for us he had us in mind 
when he was creating them and it's something to be grateful for. It's always been a mystery to me How two hearts can come together And love can last forever And now that I have found you I believe That a miracle has come When God sends a perfect one Gone are all my questions about why And I've never been so sure Of anything in my life Oh, I wonder what God was thinking you I wonder if he knew everything I would need cause he made all my dreams come true when God made you he must have been thinking about me That wherever you may go, wherever life may lead you, with my heart I'll be there too. From this moment on, I want you to know I'll let nothing come between us, and I will love the ones you love. Gone are all my questions about why And I've never been so sure of anything in my life Oh, I wonder what God was thinking When He created you Everything I would need Cause he made all my dreams come true And when God made you He must have been thinking about me Yes, he made the sun, he made the moon to harmonize in perfect tune One can't move without the other They just have to be together And that is why I know it's true You're for me and I'm for you Cause my world just can't be right Without you in my life In my life Yeah,
And when God made you I must have been thinking About me Thank you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, people, if you enjoyed that, please just drop a fire emoji. Just drop a fire emoji if you enjoyed that ministration. Ah, that was powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Say, so we really enjoyed. We were blessed. I wish we had more time so that maybe you can give us maybe five more songs like that one. But uh, we are blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, now, uh, if you have any questions, uh, we're going to we are going to have a question and answer session just now. So please, if you have any questions, just write them down in the chat box, and we'll send them to Mr. and Mrs. V and the uh, and our speakers, and they are going to address those questions. So please make sure you write down your questions in the chat box. And without wasting any time, I hand over the time to Mr. and Mrs. V. Over to you. Wow. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me start by first of all saying um, thank you to Minister Daniel. Uh, yeah. As we were playing, you know, somebody prophesied here. <laughs> all right. And she said, ah, that I'm inviting him to sing at my wedding. And I said, hey, <laughs> she's behind the scene. <laughs> she's behind the I won't mention the person's name, but we connected with prophetically as well. So God bless you so much. And uh, while the Star Wars lovers were speaking, we were so excited that we forgot that the baby was sleeping. <laughs> and we were just laughing and we saw the baby woke up. <laughs> and I was going to ask um, also if if you get to that point, you know, where you are quietly moving that tiptoeing. <laughs> Yeah, we've gotten there. We've gotten there. <laughs> like, also, everything is quiet and in slow motion. <laughs> well, glory to God. Yeah. All right. Um, before we go to the question, we just have to say a big thank you to you yeah. once again. We can't thank you well enough. I was, I was taking notes. Yeah. Yeah. They were, those were practical, practical, real, very practical. Yes, it was really, really amazing for me. You know, let me just mention one of the things that you know that really struck me. I don't like the <laughs> I don't like using the word struck. Oh, I've had past with that word. Okay. Anyway, um something that stood with me was what Faith said. Um she said she spoke about teachability. Oh my mm. God. That is that is so so key. And that was one of the things that attracted me to my husband as well because mm. yes. I'm teachable. Are you hearing for the first time? I want to hear again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, um, I noticed, I observed that, okay, for both of us, we had mentors in our lives, you know, in our lives, yes. And it, my, my husband is quick to say, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, you know. And once there's a correction, he's quick to pick it and say, ah, no, 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 no. I have to make adjustments and I was like, so someone can be like this because for me, I can be resistant sometimes. I'm like, no, are you sure? Well, no, please, I will think about it. Well, the truth is, she thinks I am quick. She doesn't know the fight that is taking place inside. How long it has taken me to get to that point? <laughs> you know, but I, I, I really, really appreciate the session. It was really amazing Thank for you. us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we are sure everybody was blessed as well. Please, don't just um see this as good word. Yes, it's good, but see it as something to work with. Yeah. You know, everything you heard today, please, every adjustment that needs to be made, you know, please do do does do justice to everything you heard yeah. today. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we have questions. Hmm. Um we I think there are questions from the group, but before we go to those questions, we just have two questions from here. Um, the first one, it says, um, you know, most times when we talk about differences, um, sorry, hold on a minute, please. When we talk about differences, 
some people feel like, well, they said we should work we should um, manage the differences and then they can't really decipher which one is the negotiable ones and which one are the ones that say, ah, well, this one is a no-no for me, mm -hmm. you know. So we would like you to help us, you know. Especially for the singles. Yeah, because there are a lot of single people here. Clearly states that these are the things that are non-negotiable. These are the things that you can still work with because we know people are not perfect. But how, what, how can you tell that this is a no-no while this, I can still work with it? Yeah. All right, do you want to take I mean, that? I'm tempted to, to just refer them to 12 hour videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you can please, do that. Please, please if you have videos, that. of course, please. You can. Yeah. I mean, I think there's this one that five kinds of people you should not marry and then there's um five reasons to break up that relationship yes. so it's like a that. part one and part two <clears throat> five kind of people you should not marry and five reasons you should break up that relationship of course we're still going to talk about some of them here yeah. um but those ones that they are those, they're, we went they're, into more details of like the um the non-negotiables like yes so let me just highlight a few names. of them first and foremost when you want to talk about as a single you don't Want, you want to know what you're doing and avoid dating or marrying the wrong person, you must know who you are, know what you want. And so the first question is, what's your idea about marriage? When you think about marriage and as a believer, what do you see? Do you see a loving home, a peaceful home? Do you see a home where there is little or no fight? where the children are brought up in the knowledge of God, in the way of God? Do you see yourself and your spouse doing great things for God, um, blessing lives? When you see all those things and a riffraff comes to you, you already know that we don't match, right? So what are you planning on building for the future? It did, that depend, That determines the raw materials that you put together. Mm -hmm. And so for different people, it will be more specific and so it will be different. But generally speaking, if you have someone that fears God, someone that is teachable, who takes correction, someone that loves yes. you someone and loves people, kind. someone that is kind, not just kind to you, but kind to others, kind to people who are seemingly undeserving of his kindness, uh, kind to the cleaner, kind, kind to people who will not be able to pay him back, not someone that is you know, kind to people because of what he will get uh, in return. These are things that you should look out for non-negotiably, all right? <clears throat> but then, what are the things you should run away from? Someone that is wicked is literally the opposite. If you can see that this person is wicked, is no, you are not born again. Uh, you know, did Jesus you think you have met? You, you need to go and meet him again, sir. You know, I'm not seeing the Holy Spirit working on you. Anybody that is wicked. You know that delights in in wickedness you see you see something wicked done and you don't feel bad but you feel like oh it deserved it ah ah run oh run someone that cannot take corrections and yes just overly is, stubborn yes if you realize you have a friend who never takes correction in fact they never say anything wrong with themselves they are narcissists they think they are the best uh thing ever like if you correct them, they are shocked, like, ah, Mickey, how? Mm -hmm. They never see anything wrong. Like, I could be wrong. All knowing, you get it. That's a wrong trait. These things, some of them can be worked on if they are teachable. You see, some people could have an overinflated opinion of themselves, but they are teachable. And so when you sit them down and you tell them that, bros, calm down. To so calm down on this. <laughs> you know, you, you are not, you're not there yet maybe they can realize that and calm down so but if they are not teachable it means they cannot change it means they don't listen and those are the, a few things i just want to another mention. thing i would also want to add is um someone that values you you know oh, there's yes. there are so many things we can mention but these are just those very very important things the, to tell you the, you the truth there are so many differences that we all have many of the differences we mentioned there are things you can work on there are things you can marry there are things you can blend together it's when you are trying to not look at the person's value system the person's love for god the person's that's when you now start to see that okay i can't take this and i can't take this you know things like that so yeah yeah i hope that answered the question 
yes perfectly it definitely it does mm. all right uh well i think maybe one or two more before we just straight open to the house yeah. um this is uh, was inspired as we're just speaking now all right um i believe there are a lot of people that um probably married and they aspire to do great things together all right but differences are stopping them and mm -hmm. i'm talking from even personal experience all right. So I want to know um, what sacrifices do you think you have made? All right. Um, personally. All right. And what were the things that helped you to grow? Mm. All right. I, I mean, um, just aside general, um, maybe praying and maybe uh, confessing the words now. If there are specific um, things that you know you had to lay this down, that it was difficult for you to lay down, but you had to lay it down. And you know that this laying this down was like laying Isaac down for you to become the father of many nations, all right? Mm -hmm. The Star Wars lover that people can see now, mm -hmm. it is probably because of, you know, those things that you have probably done, all right? I don't know if the question makes sense. Yeah, I, I think it made, makes sense. I can't think of too many uh, because for a long time we were clear on the vision, uh, especially in terms of the direction of how our marriage would go, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, however, um, because my wife sometimes, uh, and back in the day could be slightly difficult, right? <laughs> slightly difficult. So, uh, it took a little more persuasion to sell the vision, right? It took a, took a little more persuasion, took a little more intentionality. And also I would never take a decision or a step in the direction that she doesn't agree with like so she, because she knows that she's able to just you know what let me just listen to her to him i get a bigger pardon and so we took a little more persuasion back in the day now it's easier in some way in a few negligible things maybe she could argue um mm, i don't really want this i don't really think we should start that um, but for for a long time we've been very aligned with the direction of our lives, very aligned, spot on confirmations. If I'm thinking something, God is showing her. I'm sharing which is like I'm thinking the same almost all the time. Um, but in little areas, maybe in our relationship with people, because of course you see the kind of ministry we have we need to be able to relate with people we need to be able to touch people she yeah, and i'm not super relational she's not super relational and so it's sometimes i have to sacrifice some relationships um, and for me i have to sacrifice my personal space and my you know <laughs> your 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 preferred you know way of of walking Related. yes <laughs> she, she had to learn to work with people that More. she didn't want to work with and not because there was anything intrinsically wrong with them yeah. but because i just really it's just hard for me to make friends per se and to pull people in like you're my person my party you know? yes it's, it's easier for and me. so while i was waiting for her to you know come to that level i had to let go of such yeah you know relationships so imagine that kind of thing if i can't hang out with my friend because it's going to make my wife feel a type of way and you know the beautiful thing about it by the time i usually got aligned with such friendships because he let it go he's always able to get it back there yes. is no friend that yeah he had, had to let go that he's not friends with back again because he he actually let me go through that process but while he was letting me go through that process he didn't invalidate how you how felt. I felt i yeah. didn't go behind your back you know i was i just let her because she's the most important thing in my world like take the old world give me jesus and my wife <laughs> you know and now my son so the world is growing bigger and, and so i just had to so it's prioritizing your spouse above all else and in that sacrifices will be made um because when the two of you agree you can make faster progress so if you step back to make sure you are aligned it's not a wasted time. Yeah, no, it's not a waste. Yeah. So, so uh, is it safe to say that based on that, all right, to say that some of the things that you sacrificed, all right, either as the husband and the wife, is similar to what um, uh, Abraham sacrificing his Isaac, all right, and getting even mm -hmm. more in return? 
Absolutely. In terms of in terms of the results, yes. Wow. All right. That was so spot on, I think. Yeah, it yeah. is. So do we have more questions? Yeah, there? just one. I and I think this is very important, you know, because I've seen this trend of people throwing banters at each other. And they build that, then they're like, it's because we are Paddy now, uh, we are friends, so I can call you Big Ed. Like, you know, I've, I've seen it. <laughs> you know, I can call you Big Ed, I can call you Chicken, you know, all those kind of things. Where do we draw the boundary? Because I've seen people call their husband's name and they feel like it's because we are friends. All right. What, what, <laughs> okay, so my addition to the question is what if the other party is okay with it, likes it? Is it good? No, how will you be okay with it? I don't know, Sha. But anyway, uh, we don't we don't do it. Oh, uh, somebody. Is <laughs> no, we don't do it. Too. But I've seen it. I've always seen it on social media. You know, I've seen yeah. it on social media where someone is blogging and is calling the husband names. I'm like, ah, no, don't call the name. <laughs> you know. So, but where do we draw the boundary? Yeah. yeah. That's just it. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the thing about my, my husband and I is that we are also like that. I mean, I was I'm literally so big on insults. He too is so big on insults. If I had met someone that was like that, that would have been such a deal breaker for me. Like I now nah, I can't. But that's the beautiful thing about life. So people, that's the way they like doing their thing. And you don't have to act. Ah, the husband doesn't have problem with it. The husband who does his own back, nobody has problem with it. That's the engineering we are talking about. That is the wiring we are talking about. I wouldn't particularly endorse it as an individual. You know, I wouldn't endorse it. I don't really, I don't believe in insulting anybody for fun. It's not. I feel like they can make grow. Any sense. Up Both of them can out grow up out of that. But in the end, the couple's dynamics, eh? They are so different. The one thing we work for you is the opposite that is working for another marriage. Opposites, you know, and that's the beautiful about beautiful thing about differences. As much as no two individuals can be the same, no two marriages also, no two combinations of those individuals can be the same, right? So for us outsiders, it's like mm, do you, but for us as maybe counselors, you know, to people that are single and things like that, I would counsel you to try to reduce that you know modify your personality or your character and your speech and your vocabulary to exclude those things yes you know that's and what instead, I would advise. instead if you are so used to name calling or whatever uh attribute calling use good attributes use sweet names you know beautiful things you know, you know. it's so it's something to improve on it's, it's not a good on. trait it's not a good trait but yeah. as long as it's not one-sided it's still there's still equilibrium like we have a, a couple friend they are beautiful they love each other and for me to say this i've known them for a few years but when we met me and my wife were like what was this i hope this guy doesn't beat his wife <laughs> With the way out of jest, ah, can you go? Ah, ah, I personally, my wife and I gossiped about it. I mean, couples <laughs> gossip. I don't think that one is a sin, it, it is, it is communion. We gossiped about it like, what didn't you? Don't you think the way this guy was always beating or hitting his wife? in playful mode it's too much i mean maybe not even hit maybe something like let's push yes ahead. like oh. ah bigot or oh, idiot sorry I, I don't normally hit your head it felt wrong just doing it <laughs> i don't do it you know and i was like but we decided to keep quiet and just observe them for a longer time i saw that the lady doesn't have any issue with it they are best she would just friends. be laughing and giggling. They are, she's an introvert. Maybe that's even one way they relate. Best of friends. They are happy. They are still married. They are, they are our good friends. And I've seen that reduce. Yeah. And maybe they've also grown out of out it. Out of it, yeah. But in the moment, it wasn't an issue in their relationship. Right? And we kept to ourselves. In marriage, sometimes you must learn to leave those two together, you know, those two alone. Because they are navigating their own life. And you are a third party. So, you know, so unsolicited opinions can really come off as as intrusive. So, 
Well, th thank you so much for that. Uh, I just wanted to add that uh, instead of uh, maybe calling the person coconut head, see there's oil on your head. You are, <laughs> oh, yes, you are yes. not fed with grace and favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, and also, uh, one thing that we I think we are learning also is the fact that it is not just about us sometimes. I mean, yeah. if, if we are calling ourselves names and we are cool with it, people might come around and think that's a good way yeah, you know, yeah. to treat one another. All right, and they end up, you know, applying it in their relationship, and it doesn't work out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so there's a question from I think it's from the chat. I'm not sure, but this was saying, uh, Mrs. I think this should be the last question. Okay. Um, what are the practical steps to walk through differences that were not there prior to marriage, mm. especially <laughs> if they are your non-negotiables? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so like waking up in marriage and realizing that it seems things have changed all right the mm -hmm. the differences have they suddenly appeared out of nowhere can they right. anyway Anything okay so guys i don't know but to be very factual unless you didn't do your dating and courtship period very well you shouldn't be surprised it shouldn't there shouldn't be any non-negotiables like something so strong as you know foundational things that are just completely off the you know off the mark or off of where you are going it shouldn't come up even if some changes happen it should just be due to some maybe influence maybe someone is recently been stressed at work Maybe someone is pregnant and they're having hormones and, you know, those are the kind of things that can happen that will make things different. But something so strong as a non-negotiable non that it's like, oh my God, I didn't, I never knew this person. Unless that person had successfully deceived, deceived you. you. Like they lied for one year, two years, three years. And you, you, did not, you did not take your time to investigate. <laughs> to investigate and to actually have a proper relationship with them mm -hmm. to actually get to know them yeah and by investigation what we mean is not calling cia and paying them to do a background check but um having conversations that will reveal the soul of someone you know in, yeah. in in our words jesus said the words that i speak to you their spirit and their life when people speak you can see their spirit you can discern them from the way they talk from what they say you can discern their hearts because jesus said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks mouth so when you are in dating that's why you should avoid premarital sex because you should talk more and touch less so that yeah. you can see who you are um, about to marry exactly right so <laughs> clear eyes yes so it is in that process that you begin to realize oh okay this person i don't think you are born again for you to think this way are you yeah. sure are you i know sure you go to church again? you speak in tongue but wait can we talk about your salvation again you know uh those are the things those are the places that you see that but you know what let's even say you tried your best and you've married this person and things pop up two things come to my mind um and these are probably things that i would do if i'm in that person's scenario number one talk to the lord about it number two talk to your partner everything yes. we've talked about the same way you navigate differences that you know or that you realize before you got married if a new difference comes up communicate be patient you know allow them to to grow to out of grow. it let's say your spouse suddenly picks up a porn addiction and they were never really like that before you know you need to investigate what's going on you know what's going on with your personal devotion with your with your devotion to the How lord can i help you know have you been praying well, okay can we do more bible study can we intentionally focus on this flesh because the flesh can manifest in many areas and if someone feeds their flesh too much, you just see a branch that you never expected come out. And so these are possibilities, even though it should be strange for a believer who is grounded, rooted, and keeps himself in the, in the love of God. Um, but if that happens, it's, it calls for a more sober approach. Yeah, and you need to talk to your partner about it. You yes, need you, need you need to help them. You need to help yes. them. And if necessary, you need to involve a professional third party 
that's someone that can really help you. Yes, mm-hmm. like, not someone that just know your gist. Not someone that say, say I'll be praying for you. But so, uh, someone that would would listen to you and can help. Yeah, and that could be a very mature pastor or a trained counselor. counselor. I think that would that would help. Yeah. Thank All you right. So wow. Well, speaking about counsel, I think yeah. it's one of our videos I will still talk. Um, I mean, they had in during the announcement, we still talk about it. Yeah. The Star Wars lovers are seasoned. Yeah. All right, and certified counselors. All right, and we can reach out to them through the StarWarsLovers.com. I mean, just type their name on Google. All right, uh, there, there are no two Star Wars lovers. All right, any other one. All right, is not is not known by us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, yes, uh, we don't know if you have a final um final word. words to uh, most people are connecting from China, but we have people connecting from different parts of the yeah, world. Some from uh, Nigeria. Yeah. 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 Do you have any final words of admonition? Yes, um, definitely. I always end any final words by saying that a good marriage is possible. Yeah. And we want everyone listening to us. It's a privilege to have you here, or some of you might be meeting us for the first time. Um, but one thing that is common in every demonstration of our ministry, whether it is showing you our life, or it is teaching, or or anything, is just to demonstrate that this marriage thing can work, is working, and will work for you. It is possible. I want you to. Wherever you are, just say if you are if you're not married or even if you're married, say a good marriage is possible. My marriage will work. My marriage will work. Believe it in the core of your soul. Your being. Yeah. All right. And you see, another thing you can do is take your time. It's good that you follow the V's awesome. Look for couples that are getting it right and 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 study what they are doing. Check what are they doing? How did they get it right? How did they get their partner that looks so perfect? Even though no partner is perfect, but at least perfect enough for us to consider them examples. <clears throat> How did they do it? Okay, what can I learn? What are the issues in my life I need to work on so that I can be as good as these people, if possible, even better? Because it will not work because you are a good person. It will work because you are putting in the work. So it is possible, but you must be ready to put in the work. God is available to help you. God loves marriages. I think after after loving the world and dying for us, it's like his only marriage that he focused on because that's his tool for expanding his, his, his work on the earth. And so if God sees that you want a good marriage, he says that you cannot ask your father for a fish and he will give you one. You know, you, you know, so you, you can't ask him for bread and he will give you stone. And so you must believe that god can help you and he will help you he would help you seek help and someone sent a direct message so touching means no touch at all before you marry even hugs that's a long story i want to refer you to a video how far is too far <clears throat> how far is too far in the godly yeah. relationship check out that on our on our channel you see the answer there it's it's hugs are different they're different hugs so if i tell you hug is fine you can land yourself in trouble <laughs> so but all that to say a good marriage is possible and you can you can do it it's possible you will achieve it put in the work and god will see you through thank Amen. you and thank you so much for having us on your thank platform thank you so much such a privilege you know we've been friends for a long time and uh, i used to say that one of my nicknames back in the day was mickey jazz and that's because you know, Mr. V was fairy jazz. You know, when I saw him first, I said, ah, fairy jazz. I just changed my own Mickey jazz, you know. So we've been friends for a long time. It's been a wonderful uh, relationship. And I pray that the Lord continues to increase you and bless you uh, to abound even much more graciously in your ministry, in your family, in your marriage, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before you go, you touched the notes, all right? Um, you touched the... A chromatic scale, and <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, I would say that sometimes God brings people into our life in the past, all right, but we don't probably discern, all right, the whole scope of the relationship, all right. I mean, at that time, it was just about music, 
all right but little did we know that you know uh there's love and relationship and marriage and you know assignments that is going to evolve in the future well i'm not saying that's odd for now all right but i'm uh, just putting a word out there that people around you we should ask god what is the future of this thing what is the potential what are the seeds that are planted in these people all right mm -hmm. who knows who knows what would have happened if uh if I had seen beyond the Mickey Jazz at that time, all right, but don't worry, we are seeing beyond it now. All right, and we celebrate you once again. Please do Thank extend so our love. And we want to say a shout out to all the Star Wars Lovers fans that are there. Yes. All right, and um, I, I see we are about 70 here. I know 70 had it to 100,000 plus subscribers on YouTube. Probably you won't feel it. But please, if there's no anybody that is not subscribed there, please, we are begging of you. Go and subscribe. If you want subscribe this word, if you want this word to channel. work, Go ahead, so, okay, to work with us. Yeah, a lot of amazing things. And I, I actually celebrate their consistency because yeah. we are trying to do it, but no, 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 it's a no. lot of work. Yeah. I can tell you it's a lot. So they are putting in the work and they have good content. Yeah. 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 All right. So with this, uh, we just like to hand over to the. Yeah, uh, we'll MC. take the announcement. Please, in the announcement, there'll be more details on how to connect um, to the Star Wars lovers. Lovers. So don't go away. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a powerful session of question and answer. And since our theme is understanding differences, we want to think our speakers in a different way. We want everyone, I want everyone to write down how you say thank you in your own language. In Shona, we say my tabasa. So Please just write down in the chat box how you say thank you in your own language. Yes, yes, thank you so much. I can see. I wish I could read all the all the words. But yes, thank you, my Tabasa. We thank you so much, our speakers. That was powerful. And for uh the vote of thanks, I'm going to give it over to Mr. Kamate. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. I hope I am audible. If you are here yes. and you are blessed by, yes, if you are here and you are blessed by the Star Wars lovers, can you keep on appreciating them in the chat box? Send those fire emojis, love emojis. I am seeing people who are really appreciating them. Thank you really so, so much. We are so grateful. And thank you for availing yourself and also accepting our invitation. You have really taught us a lot. We have really, really been taught a lot. Thank you so much. And we love as well to acknowledge our host, Mr. and Mrs. V. Can we all appreciate them in the chat box? Can we appreciate Mr. and Mrs. V? They have really taken their time to organize this incredible event. Please appreciate them in the chat box. You can say thank you in your local language, as our MC said. Just say thank you in your local language. And also appreciate the team that worked together with Mr. and Mrs. V to organize this amazing event. I love as well to acknowledge our partners, the alien partners, and also our advisory board represented by Chairman is here, Chairman Ofemi. Thank you so much for making time to be here. Indeed, we have been blessed by your uh, presence. And also this one, I just want you to get ready because if you love the spoken word, if you are also blessed by that song ministration, just appreciate our ministers, Mr. Seth and Mr. Daniel. It was so, so powerful. I'm telling you, I was just here crying when Minister Daniel was singing. Was, oh my goodness, this is so, so powerful. Let's appreciate them. They have really, really done a lot. And oh my goodness, they have blessed us so, so, so much. And also, we love to appreciate all fellowship leaders and all members who managed to join us today. We are really, really grateful for your presence and participation in this uh, special events that we have had today. Thank you so, so much. We don't really have enough one to thank you, but please accept our gratitude. And lastly, let's all appreciate ourselves for being here till now. See, we started by 6.30. This is 8.30 and we are still here. Can we all appreciate ourselves for making it till the end? Wow, it has really been an amazing uh, event and we love you so much. We really love you so, so much. Remember to follow the steward love us and always spread love wherever you go thank you so so much and may god bless you abundantly mc 
I will hand it over back to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kamate, for the vote of thanks. We are really grateful to everyone who joined to our speakers. Thank you so much. Despite all the different time zones, uh, everyone is still here. You came in your numbers. We thank you to our speakers. We thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, now, before we get to the next segment of announcements, I just want to hint that we're going to open our videos very soon just to see each other. So please, if you're not ready, this is the time to do the touch-ups for the ladies. Yes. So now I'm going to hand over the time to our media. They're going to show us a video with the announcements. Media, over to you. Joining us today, here are some of our quick announcements. Are you currently in a long-distance relationship? Or concerned that you may soon be entering one? Are you scared or wondering if there is any hope for strong intimacy? Understanding and healthy growth for relationships where the couples are currently separated by distance? Introducing Managing a Long-Distance Relationship. Your guide to transforming the temporal distance into a force to strengthen your love while overcoming challenges and building stronger intimacy. We understand the fears, the uncertainties, and the heartbreaking tales that surround long distance relationships. That's why we crafted this book to share ideas and strategic insights on ways to strengthen your relationship over long distance, things to avoid, and how to work together in agreement. This book is not just for couples currently separated by miles. It's a roadmap to singles, dating, and married. It contains clear and interesting insights for anyone dreaming of a relationship that overcomes barriers and boundaries to build stronger, godly, purposeful, and love-lasting relationship. You can get your copy on Amazon, or if you are in China, you can visit Upay to secure your copy using the QR codes on your screen. Please note that there are few copies left. Are you seeking guidance in your relationship, either as a single, dating, or married? We're here for you. Join Mr. and Mrs. V for personalized counseling sessions. Gain clarity on how to build kingdom marriage, resolve relationship issues. Gain clarity on vision and purpose alignment in marriage. Promote intimacy, enhance your communication, and for more, scan the code or visit the link to book your one-on-one -on -one counseling session now. Act fast, as slots are limited. Begin your journey to a healthier, purpose-driven, love-lasting relationship. Please remember to keep the love alive and stay connected with us on social media for the latest news on our upcoming events. Every year, we gather tens and hundreds of entrepreneurs and social innovators around the world online for the iGlow International Conference for Social Innovators last year. Close to 100 participants attended. The third edition comes up in April. Stay connected to our social media for more details. Are you ready to join a thriving community of Love Umbrella Network members around the world? Become a part today by scanning the QR codes to join our WhatsApp and WeChat groups for more updates. We are also excited to inform you that the Stalwart Lovers are certified marriage counselors and you can book your session on their website www.thestalwartlovers.com Don't forget to follow them on all the social media networks and let us all join the global family of the stalwart lovers Thank you so much media for the announcements please an emphasis make sure that you join the groups the wechat the whatsapp and follow us on social media so that you can get updates on the future events that are coming now is the time we've been waiting for uh it's time for us to have the group photo so please you can open your cameras open your cameras we want to see you if you open your camera, I'll give you a shout out. 
let's see, let's see. I can see, oh wow, I can see the V's. Wow, baby Eden. I can see Mona Lisa. Let me see who else has opened their camera. Guys, open, open, open. We want to see you. I can see Dr. Blessing. Hello, hello. Wow, you can see our wonderful minister, Daniel Nyanga, uh, Dr. Kamate, uh, Mr. Kamate. Yes, yes, I can see. Who else? Who else? I can see you, Pethu. Is it correct? Hello, thank you so much for opening your camera. I can see oh, I Alumi, Genevieve. Thank you, thank you. Uh, please, people, get ready for the picture. Really? Get ready for the picture. Yes. I can see Sister yes. Debbie. Hello. Yes, the people that are inspired to get married from here, remember to send us wedding invitation. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All yes, right. please. Wedding invitation. So uh, whenever you're ready, media, you can take the picture. Oh, strange. Can you imagine? People smile. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, okay. Those who are closing their cameras, you never know. This might be the day. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. We are really privileged that you, you joined. And thank you so much to our speakers once again. Uh, we are really, really, really grateful. Mr. and Mrs. V, we love you. Thank you so much, L-U-N. Everyone, thank you. Good night. Good well, morning. Mr. Daniel, Good afternoon. Please pass our high regards to Mrs. Nyaga. Uh, please tell her we love her, we celebrate her, we bless God for the grace of God in your family. Thank you so much for you know blessing us with that powerful ministration tonight. We are blessed. Definitely. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. And Mr. Seth, I don't I don't think he's there, but if you are there, your spoken word. I mean, people are saying that uh uh, they want to in another event, all right? So please, just start getting ready. God is opening and um, exploding your ministry all around the world by the grace of God. We love you. We celebrate you so much. All right, family, this is where we draw the curtain. See you in IGLO in April, uh, IGLO International Conference for Social Innovators. So for entrepreneurs and social innovators, we see you in April. We love you. Keep spreading love. Bye bye. 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 Hey, baby V. <laughs> want to say hi. Baby V is missing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just, just wondering that what was this program that has been taking my parents? Mommy <laughs> away. <laughs> My boy has been very cooperative. Yeah. All right. No when you grow. <laughs> ah, Sister Mata, Empress Mata, thank you so much. We love you. We celebrate thank you. you. Thank you so much for the prayers. Thank you for the support. God bless you. And I saw um, Big Brother Reynard. Yeah. Big Brother Reynard, thank you so much. Uh, we didn't see your face, but uh, I can see your face in the spirit. I know, <laughs> I know you are smiling right now. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. We love you. We celebrate you. Sorry, sorry. All right, uh, ZICF <laughs> Media, thank you so much. Um, Sister Tina, Mr. K, uh, Mr. Silompwe, I believe your brother, um, Sabet, thank you. Uh, Audrey, thank you. Flomo, thank you. Alentin, thank you. Uh, we call it a day here. God bless you. Um, my sister and my brother, Allah Yemi Ajayi, God bless you. Pastor Victor, I am, I am Sigupumbu. Oh, my goodness. This is set. Oh, this is, I don't know. Oh, I didn't know that. So, no, I understand. My, my I second name is really complicated to many people. I had to press that button before you, talk, you turn on your video. I know, how to, I know how to get you to turn on your video now. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, sir. Have a blessed evening. Yes, you too. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. Bye, family. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Okay.